it's going to be so hard. But I went home and I go, how do I make a nonprofit in Oregon? And it was so easy and simple. And I love birthdays so much. And they're so important and invaluable to lift children. Welcome to Learning from Experience, a podcast for college students and recent grads who want to hear directly from alumni and how they've adjusted their lives post-graduation, including personal stories of success, career readiness, and tips for navigating the real world. I'm your host, Megan Finnerty, and today I'll be talking with Sandra Stewart, who graduated from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at ASU in 2023 with a degree in English and a minor in political science. She is currently entering her second year of law school and previously worked as a medical assistant. But when Sandra was growing up, she experienced homelessness, and that led her to frequently miss school. And that's why during college, she started a nonprofit for houseless youth called Light the Way Birthday. The organization helps give birthday parties to unhoused children in her community. And in the future, Sandra hopes to combine her medical experience with her legal expertise to make a positive impact on the community that she serves. Thanks so much for coming out, Sandra. Hi, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, can you start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what it's like being in law school? I currently live in Oregon, and I just finished my first year of law school, and I just started a position as a law clerk at the Department of Justice in the Child Advocacy and Protection Division, and it's definitely been trial by fire because I'm working very closely with these attorneys and they just throw assignments at me. And a lot of the times I have to Google what they're asking, but I feel like that's a pretty great way to learn. Law school was so much different than any sort of educational experience I've ever had. What was your journey to ASU like? I went later on in life. I didn't start my bachelor's until I was 31. And I had I had a full time job and I was a supervisor at a wellness clinic um, and I had a mortgage, so I couldn't quit my job and and do a traditional school. I had to do it concurrently. So, yeah, I love the flexibility that online education brings. I absolutely loved it because I could do both. I could do full time work and full time school. And it, it was great. That's that is the reason why I went to ASU. What made you decide to pursue an English degree? I missed a lot of school growing up. And I think part of the reason I chose English as a major at ASU was because even though I had missed a lot of school and I missed a lot of foundational learning, books were always a constant and they were always there. And I always knew what to do with a book. And I just loved reading so much. And I could never find anyone in my personal life to talk to me about books. Like I might find one or two people to say, oh, have you read this book? And then they would say yes. Um, But I really wanted to just sit there and talk for hours about the meaning of the book and the little messages and what they got from it. And I, I feel like I could talk for days about how wonderful books are and how everyone's personal experience brings out something different in a book. So that was my original purpose um, for going to ASU. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it. I thought I wanted to become an English teacher, but then I graduated ASU with the goal of going to law school. And my initial um, goal when I was going to ASU was to be an advocate for children because I know in my life, there was a lot of teachers that really made a difference for me, and I really wanted to give that back to them. But then I started my nonprofit during my ASU experience, and that pivoted my goal towards still advocating for children, but in the legal field. What are ways that you think an English degree is impacting your current career? Law school is all about reading and writing and taking a fact pattern or a story and pulling out important pieces and dissecting them and really thinking critically about things that are presented to you. And I think my English degree really helped me with all of the reading and analyzing skills and critical thinking. Um, So yeah, I'm very, I'm very glad that I decided to pursue English because that did help a lot. So what inspired you to start your own nonprofit? I remember um, I 
asked my boss if I could take this trauma-informed class. And it wasn't required for medical assistance. It was required for nurses, but I was very interested in it. And she said no. And so then like I printed off the flyer and I was like, this is why I need to go. This is, and I just like gave this whole pitch and she's like, well, after that, I can't say no. So she found me coverage and I went to this class and w they were talking about, um, ACE scores. And I, of course I'd heard of ACEs before, but I don't think I had thought too much of them. An ACE is an adverse childhood experience, and the CDC has identified nine of them. And I remember sitting there and um, adding up mine, and I had all, like all of them, like every single one that she said, I had all of them. And like she started talking about how like the more people have, the more likely that they will be become homeless themselves, become addicted to drugs, have uh, mental health issues, physical, physical health issues, um, a higher rate of incarceration and all these things. And I remember just sitting in that classroom, like looking around and it was like this huge, like moment for me. I'm like, whoa, but like everyone's going on with this class. I'm just like, how do I have all of these aces, but I'm fine. Like I, I have a good job that I like. I have really great friends. Like I was, I couldn't believe it that I, you know, was okay and um she then she started talking about like how you offset ace a scores was by building resiliency and then so she was talking about like um role models within the community and then i started to think about all of the wonderful role models i had and a lot of them were teachers and so then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to school, I'm gonna get this English degree, I'm gonna become a teacher, and then I'm gonna give back to the next generation, just like be that healthy adult in their life that they can count on and be safe with. And then I was starting to think about more like, what can I do in the interim? Because I knew I had to get my bachelor's and in, in Oregon, you have to have a master's. Um, and so like, what can I do in the interim? What can I do right now? Because I felt like this urgent pressing need to do something. Um, and then I remembered birthdays, like how I love birthdays so much. And I think they're so, it's so important and invaluable to um, really uplift children and let them know that they are loved within their community. I thought it was going to be so hard, but I went home and I go, how do I make a nonprofit in Oregon? And it was so easy and simple. And I, I mean, I didn't know how to do it in the beginning. I certainly looked things up and learned along the way. And I'm still learning. I remember like, how do I, what are bylaws? Um, and then I remember I, I was applying for this grant like a year or two after it. And they, they emailed me and they're like, we can't consider you for this grant because you're not registered with the Department of Justice. They're charitable organizations. I had never heard of that. And I was like, okay, well, hold on. Let me go and get registered with the Department of Justice charitable donation or charitable activities. And then can I email you? And they're like, yeah, sure. And so I, you know, had to go figure that out. So it's just been like, there's like huge learning experience that's been also really rewarding and really fun. It sounds like Light the Way birthday is something that obviously you started, but you still have such a passion for. What would you tell someone that the importance of it is? Yeah, I always tell people that this is not um, about gifts and it's not about, you know, things that money can buy. Um, it is about being that healthy adult role model in a child's life that really can stay with them for a lifetime because I, I know for me when I had just they were very small and minor interactions at the time but it just stayed with me over time and that just that little amount of like invest investing in children and showing that they care that their community cares about them really goes a long way and and in turn, I feel like we're investing in our community when we're investing in children. And it's definitely not about gifts, but when a child opens up a gift that is something that is personal to them and special, it gives them more than just monetary possessions. And I've heard feedback from um, one of the shelters I work with the most. Um, they tell me what children say, and they will just say things like, I never had a birthday before. And I feel like my community really cares about me. And I, I know from personal experience that that small effort goes so long. And like, I was there 
at one point and now it's not something my past is not something that um, prevents me from doing things that I want to do. Well, what has been the most surprising thing to you that you learned about yourself and your career as you've navigated different interests? I have learned a lot about myself a while ago before I started at ASU. I probably I really thought that I couldn't do very much just because I missed so much school and I felt very behind. And then I realized that like my persistence is really what matters most because I I care very deeply about the things that I, I work for and fight for. And I think that is sometimes the deciding factor in success. Um, my very first grant that I wrote got denied um, and I kept doing it. And last year I, on grants alone, I brought in $20,000. So I think it's okay to get rejected and okay to get no's. And I think as you, if, if it's something that you really care about, just, just keep plugging along and keep being, you know, resilient and, and fight for, for what you want. What advice would you have for students today who are looking for different ways to use their degree to give back to community? I think my first bit of advice is to find out what you're passionate about because once you find that it's easier to fight for it and also find your tribe because people are amazing and it's amazing how the community will come together for you and for your mission um also for um students still at asu i would just encourage them to find the resources that ASU has to offer. Because even as an online student, I had so many wonderful things that I got to be a part of, like Venture Devils. Um, I actually went and competed and got to like create a pitch and like present it. And I got wonderful feedback from the judges. And my success coach was amazing. And I still sometimes email him and I've sent him a card when he got a promotion and it no longer was my success coach. Um, I just think that there are so many wonderful resources at ASU, even for online students, just maybe get involved and try out a bunch of different things and volunteer for things that you know, you normally wouldn't. Animal advocacy got me kickstarted into my advocacy because I was doing something that um, I felt was important and I felt like the importance of it trumped my fear. And that kind of pushed me outside of my box and outside of my comfort zone. And then once you have this like realization that the sky is the limit and you are capable of doing so much more than you thought, then you it just starts to evolve from there. And then you just start trying different things until you find your, what you really want to do. To anyone who's listening, thank you for joining us today and learning from Sandra's experience. You can connect with her through LinkedIn, and I'll spell her first and last name for you. It's going to be Sandra is S-A-N-D-R-A, last name Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. To hear more alumni advice, head to our episode page wherever you listen to podcasts the college's YouTube channel, or visit the college.asu.edu slash LFE podcast. See you next time.